<clears throat> hey friends, Jewel back with another super cool astrology video. And I thought today we would focus on the in conjunction between Mars and Saturn in the birth chart. Why this is such a pesky dude to figure out for people. So in conjunctions are when two planets really have nothing in common. They don't get each other, they're not friends, they can't even see each other on the wheel. So they kind of estranged is what they are. You could even consider them kind of ostracized from each other. So when we have two planets that are in this type of aspect, they're very much um, awkward in nature. So it's, it's an awkward relating within us. That it, it typically, you know, in conjunctions represent a lack of success with us until we make some real adjustments, conscious adjustments within our personality to connect these two points within ourselves so then we can see success and happiness. So Mars is our initiative, our drive, our aggression, our willpower, our male side of sexuality. It's how we get what we want. Venus is what we want, Mars is how we get it. And also represents um, desire, desire for action, desire for um, success. And Saturn is the, you know, that energy of the 10th house in Capricorn, which is about our goals, growth, maturity, and, um, and not growth like Jupiter. Growth is an earned growth through learning. Not through luck or from, from having or being, from learning. And it, you know, represents authority and what we ultimately mature into. You, you know, old age, responsibility, structure, discipline, all those things. So we have two planets that really don't have a lot in common here. And they're in an aspect of weirdness where they're just not hooking up. So you can see this as a first house, tenth house issue because Mars is that energy of the first house, which is our ego and our persona and how we, have, we want others to see us and view us and how we think we are in the world. Saturn is that, um, that you know, how the public sees us and what we grow up to be, restriction, structure, la la la. So, the self-esteem is somehow, or was somehow impugned when we see this in conjunction by a male figure. It's very, very common to have um, a man around or an authority figure around that was uh, either scary or intimidating. Too, it was too much, and however it came across. So the person who has this in conjunction were very much made to feel like their energies or their ego was useless or nothing compared to the force that they were up against. So they grow up with this sense of, of, uh, of guilt associated with their ego or their energies, using those energies, because when they did that in their early life, that was frowned upon. They got a message of, you know, that, that is not okay. So this is something that later in life can render them... Um, into, or they can find themselves in conditions that can render them immobile uh, physically um, or unable somehow, extremely common. Because there is a guilt about asserting themselves and these people are masters at self-punishment. They really don't judge how to use their own aggression or initiative or sexuality well. So they tend to get into situations, careers, jobs, um, relationships where their aggression or their energy can be funneled into something. It's directed somehow from a, 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 a higher force or outside force or an authoritative force. So they... Um, 
they're very self-punishing when it comes to how they go after, when they go after their desires. So almost there's, there's a guilt about even having desires when we have this particular in conjunction. They, they want things, right? But they are unsure about deserving them or about how to go about getting them. So they, um, you know, the have, the have to, and the want to are not on the same page within these people. So they're guilty about how they use their energy. So they find a way often to punish themselves for using their aggression or their energy or their drive or their sexuality. They will find a way to either self-punish or get into a situation somehow where they are somehow stopped or punished from the outside. Um, they have deep confidence issues at, at, at the heart of it. They don't really know or have a good sense of direction. So they look for that from the outside. And when the Mars comes up in them, you know, that's that impulsive, um, youthful energy within us, that Saturn comes down and says, you should not be doing that. Because they, they're very much living out early messages related to their early life, where if they are selfish or um, aggressive or spontaneous, then they were punished for that. So they keep this going because this is familiar to them. And Saturn issues and moon issues take the longest and are the most difficult to figure out than any other planetary issues. Pluto's not even as difficult as moon or Saturn issues. You have to give yourself enough time when you have moon or Saturn issues for the messages of lack or of um, shouldn't or of fear to come up so that you have a chance to hear them, acknowledge them, thank your voice for its opinion, and not listen to it and move on and do what the Mars is asking for, which is assertion, getting to the goal, using one's energy, focused drive. So they can often, especially, especially in their early life, end up in relationships that are somehow punishing or in lifestyles that are somehow punishing. Uh, they can get into relationships where they are with an authority, a, a mate that re represents authority in some way or that, that tries to laud authority over them. Um, Punishing relationships with their employer or their job, physically punishing relationships with whatever job they're taking on, really, really common because this is comfortable for them to experience life like this. They get to do something about the guilt that they shouldn't even have. Um, it's really common for these people to end up with a condition that can... Um, create some kind of paralysis or immobilization, um, a physical compromise of some kind, especially as they get older. They tend to become very sedentary and they tend to become, uh, they just uh, sort of give, a lot of times give in to the Saturn. So they, you know, arthritis is really common. Um, Conditions that are related to the structure and the bones and inflammation, very, very common. And this is a way that they can punish themselves. This is a way, it, it's very reflective of their attitude towards themselves. Um, having, you know, something like this go on. So they really are um, easily intimidated. They are threatened easily, but they do not show it. They are overcompensators when it comes to putting on a show of strength. If you know them really well, you know that that's not the case. They need you. 
but they appear very much the opposite. Because weakness is not tolerated. So they um, put on a real good show when it comes to their abilities or their bravery when inside they're really unsure about their own abilities. So they really have to learn to respect themselves. And they have to learn to demand respect in their relationships and within their um, jobs as well. And especially in their sexual relationships because they can, if they haven't figured this out, they can get into sexual or romantic relationships where they're actually being taken advantage of or they are putting up with behaviors or a style of sexually relating that they are not okay with. So in them building good self-esteem, they make something out of their energy. See, they have to give permission to the Mars to go forward. They need to be in a position where they can be spontaneous or impulsive and not have the guilt for that come in. So it's very much about getting away from those early messages of should and shouldn't. Because they can often think very black and white when we have this one. And life really comes in shades of gray. And we learn that as we get older. That, you know, when we're taught, when we're young, you know, it's either this way or that way or heaven or hell. It, it's really about shades of gray and negotiating the nuances of life and daily life and relationships. And these people don't do that so well. So they are very unsure about their place in society and their place within relationships. As they work on their ego and developing that and developing their own confidence and their own um, initiative, and giving themselves permission to have their desires as they get away from that guilt, this in conjunction actually turns into a beautiful aspect within somebody where <coughs> sorry, they are able to bring together their ego and their energy and the structured part of themselves in a way where they can make something happen. So they go from a place of being really unsure, um, you know, pleasing the leader or, you know, pleasing the stronger mate to being the one that is rock solid because they have had to work on this characteristic. The thing about difficult or bad or hard aspects is they are character builders. These things are what make people interesting. Having a difficult aspect is not a death sentence. It is not a life sentence. It is something that you are charged to work on so that you can make it into a strength. So these people can become very independent when it comes to how they use their action because they have learned to do so over time. And that is how in conjunctions work in a beautiful way. We must take these two elements within our personality and we must do something consciously so that we can make this work within ourselves in a way that is working. So this is one that um, people tend to start out pretty um, having a hard time with this one, but if they can get a hold of it, it really does turn into a, a, a certain kind of strength of fortitude when it comes to identifying what, is, what it is they want and then being able to get it in a way that is not punishing towards themselves or others. They can end up actually becoming some of the best, most understanding bosses and employers because of how they have been on the receiving end so much of the time when it comes to um, working life or um, relationship life. So I hope this was informative and um, brought some clarity to this hard to explain, hard to understand, it's certainly hard to live with in conjunction. You can find me on the internet at truthinaspectastrology.com. You can find me on Facebook at Truth in Aspect Astrology, where you should be following me because I do the daily astrological 
astrological weather forecasts, birthday descriptions, and that will all be going on to my new website. So if you're not on Facebook, check me out over there. I'll have all kinds of new stuff updated every day. And I will see you super soon. Bye-bye.